I'm graduating university in May and planning a winter wedding. My partner and I were engaged while in undergrad together, but my parents insisted they would not pay for my continued education if I was married as it would be my husband's responsibility. At the same time, they also were strongly encouraging me to pick a top expensive university in my field. I did as they suggested and they did pay for my education and I am very grateful. Now my parents pulled me aside and told me they will not be paying for my wedding if I cannot convince my brother to attend. My older brother has in the past several years completely estranged himself from them and he will no longer speak with them under any circumstances. Myself and one cousin are the only family members in regular contact with him. It will ruin my relationship with him if I try to convince him to attend. My fiance and I are already planning a separate celebratory dinner with my brother and his partner. This left me in a difficult position. What money I have personally would not be enough to cover the costs of the wedding I was planning with my mother. When my future mother-in-law learned planning was stalled because my family had pulled financial support, she offered their estate and to pay. I was very grateful, but knew my parents would be insulted for someone else to pay for the wedding. However, I did not want to delay any longer, which I suspect may have been my parents' ulterior motive. I have also decided after speaking with my FMIOL to wear her wedding dress over the new dress I picked out with my mother. She has no daughters and this dress was worn by her and her mother and is a very timeless antique dress, which I would be honored to wear. My fiance and I have now sent our save the date cards to our guest list, and I received a frantic call from my mother. She asked what I thought I was doing, and I told her then I had changed my plans and would now be planning my wedding without her. I have never before defied my parents. My father has since called me to tell me I have embarrassed him with my impropriety. I told him it was important to me that he walks me down the aisle and gives me away. And so I would not convince my brother to attend because he will not go if my father is present. My father told me I am ungrateful and disrespectful and that I am single-handedly destroying his ability to reconcile with his only son. I'm at a loss. How do I proceed in a way in which my parents will save face? How do I explain I cannot control my brother and I have only acted as I have because they have given me an impossible task? Edit. Thank you to all who have commented. I understand where some of you are coming from, but it is not easy for me to cut off my parents. I have not gotten into it in the scope of this post, but I am also working through a fear of abandonment, having been the only adopted child. My mother would remind my sisters when they misbehave about my orphanage and tell them they could end up in a similar place, but no one would come for them because they are not well-behaved children like me. It made me deeply afraid she would take me back to my home country. I am thinking of sending this email to my parents, but I am unsure of my wording and feel perhaps I am being threatening towards my father. Should I cut out the last part and leave it at, it is still my desire for you to walk me down the aisle? I'm sure my brother would not hesitate if I asked him. And I'm sure I can work with my FMIL to accommodate the dress to allow his wheelchair next to me without permanently altering it. But I am not sure if saying I can have other plans is a threat. Mom and Dad, I love you both very much, and it greatly pains me to consider where we are at presently. My wedding is meant to be a celebration of the love between slash fiancé and myself. I do not condone the use of our day for an attempt at reconciliation with brother. It was inappropriate for you to ask me to compromise the joy of my wedding day and my good relationship with Bray brother for your access to him. As I could not meet your requirements for financial support, I understood this to mean I would not receive any and went forward with alternative plans. None of these plans were made in any attempt to cause you harm. Mom, I very much enjoyed our day at the bridal salon and mother-daughter bonding time with you. However, I can no longer afford that dress. I have found another which has a beautiful history I cannot find in a new dress. Please understand this is in no way a representation of how much I care for you. Dad, I am very hurt by your words 
I will not accept responsibility for mending your relationship with Brother Malash. It is deeply unfair to put this expectation onto me. Your recent behavior and treatment of me is unacceptable. I do not expect you to pay for anything at my wedding, and I will refuse any funding offered henceforth. I love you, even though we often don't see eye to eye, and I respect you as my father. It is still my desire for you to walk me down the aisle. However, if you continue your mistreatment of me, then I will make other arrangements. As you would say, I am stating this so that the expectations between us are clear. With love, Samioi. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Don't be a flying monkey for your parents against your brother. Your parents are trying to manipulate you into getting your brother back in contact with them so they don't have to do any of the legwork toward re-establishing a relationship with them. If we knew the reason your brother doesn't wish to have contact with them, we'd have a little more context, but you need not share that if you don't want. That being said, there's likely a good reason he has distanced himself from them. And your parents using money and the threat of withdrawing financial aid is a pretty common abuse tactic. Comment two. Look, your brother is 42 and it's up to him whether he wants a relationship with your parents or not. He clearly doesn't. Stay out of it. As for you, it's time to stop bending to your parents. If you are old enough to get married, you are old enough to say no to them. It's time to stop letting them financially and emotionally blackmail you to get what they want. It's not on you to save them from their shitty actions. If they want to save face, that's their responsibility. Maybe you should start thinking about taking a page from your brother's book and limit contact with them. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around for this update. So, after I sent that email to my parents, things went from bad to worse. My mom didn't reply, but my dad did. He said he was disappointed in me and that I was being selfish. He also said that if I went through with the wedding without his blessing, he wouldn't come. That hurt, but I was determined not to let it ruin my day. A month before the wedding, my brother called me out of the blue. He said he'd been thinking a lot and wanted to make peace with our parents. I was shocked. He asked if it was okay to come to the wedding. I said yes, of course, but I was worried about how my parents would react. Turns out, I didn't need to worry. My brother showed up at our parents' house the next day. They had a huge fight. I don't know all the details, but my cousin told me the cops were called. No one got arrested, but... My brother left and said he was done trying. The wedding was two weeks away and I was a mess. My future mother-in-law was amazing though. She helped me with everything. We decided to keep the wedding small, just close friends and family who really cared about us. The day of the wedding, my dad showed up. He didn't say anything to me at first, just sat in the back. I was so nervous, but when I walked down the aisle, he stood up and walked me to my fiance. He didn't give me away, just hugged me and sat back down. It was awkward, but I was glad he was there. After the ceremony, my dad came up to me. He apologized for everything. He said he realized he was wrong to try to control my life and that he was proud of me for standing up for myself. I couldn't believe it. We both cried and hugged it out. But then my mom caused a scene. She was furious that my dad had apologized. She started yelling about how I had ruined the family and how my brother was always the problem. It was so embarrassing. My new husband had to step in and ask her to leave. She did, but not before throwing her drink in my face. It was a disaster, but in a way it was also a relief. I realized I didn't need my parents' approval to be happy. My husband and I had each other and that was enough. Now we're just trying to move on. My relationship with my parents is strained, but I'm hopeful that with time we can rebuild. My brother and I are closer than ever and my in-laws have been incredibly supportive. Thanks for reading. My wife listens to her friend and takes our daughter to leave me broke and alone. But I fight back and win full custody, plus child support that leaves her penniless and begging for forgiveness. Last night, my wife got into a fit. We have a lot going against us. Married young, had a kid early, money struggles. She was never a go-getter. I've always wanted to be the top of everything, the best of the best, and so on. That being said, for the past three years, I've been working to provide for the house and her. Fast forward to the birth of our child, 
Times, of course, started to get financially complicated due to my place of employment being a shithole. Blah, blah, blah. Backstory. Since she became a stay-at-home mom, Saham, she's been a nightmare. There were multiple occasions when she tried to pull our child from my arms while she's trying to nap and demanded that I give her to her because she needs her. During those times, I've had to push her away with my feet and legs while holding my child. It typically occurs when I'm sitting down, so getting up and moving isn't the easiest. That has since stopped. But now, she has moved on to throwing my things. She has even thrown my old Xbox out in front of the house before. Yesterday rolls around, and we both got new jobs. She picked up a job where she's working 12-hour shifts for $1.20 per hour. I started mine today with $1.25 per hour plus commission. She started to stress about the days we don't have childcare covered before saying she is door dashing. She comes back 10 minutes later demanding to use my phone because hers was having issues. It told her to turn the location back on and she just used it fine the day before. I just thought about that being weird as I typed this. Anyway, she starts yelling and demanding that I quit my job because I'm not doing my job as her father by only watching our daughter for two days, when it's because I have work. She demands that I quit my job because she's been home for the past three years working around me. When I have been begging her to work, she left her actual job to pursue a pyramid scheme after we all told her it was a scam and she didn't listen. But I am trying to calm her down in that moment by answering anything I can and telling her we will figure this out. But quitting is not an option. It is a sales job. And she then tells me to demand Saturday off from my job. My first day was today. This occurred yesterday. I asked for $25 per hour and they gave it to me. She tells me her job is more important and it's her turn. And then she stood there for 30 minutes demanding me to quit or tell my boss I need Saturday off or she's done with me and done running circles with me. Fast forward 30 minutes of this and her unrelenting behavior. She shoves my PC off my desk across the room. Breaking it, of course. Later that night, as I'm trying to fix it, I say, a part has power. And she tells me that she's actually upset to hear that it still works. It doesn't work anymore. This is bigger than the computer. Honestly, I hate my life. I hate my wife. I hate my situation. But I have a daughter that I love with every ounce I can. And I know her mom is going to help her milk every dollar of child support they can for me. And truthfully, I'm just scared of life after that process. I just want what's best for our daughter. But it seems like every choice that is made by her is not in the best interest. I'm fully aware that all of this could just be an Emmy stupid mind thing. And if so, please tell me what I'm reading wrong. I'm so done and so lost. Edit, I appreciate every single one of you and your help. This has and is still helping me more than you can believe. Edit, edit, I must have made the math seem funky in this. My wife was 18 when I met her, and I was 20 yet. It's been a short amount of time altogether. Since about summer 2021, we have known each other. Feels longer, sorry. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Being scared is normal, but what you can do is start researching the divorce process in your area. Dig around for an attorney to have a consultation with and it will make you feel more at ease. They also usually provide additional support networks for people who need it. She doesn't sound like a safe person to be around children who are early in their development. A parent who has such rage that they throw things and break them is scary as hell to a kid. The important part is that you put those kids and yourself first here, and either she has to get some help or you need to find a way out. Comment two, your wife is harassing you Damaging your property and arguments is not okay. You need to fight for custody of your child because I fear for her safety while in her mother's care. Maybe set up cameras in your home to capture your wife's outbursts and use them to gain custody of your child when you separate. I'd get a lawyer as well. Now for the update, thank you for sticking around for this update. So things have been going from bad to worse around here. Remember how my wife threw my Xbox out well, she's at it again, but this time she took it to a whole new level. She shoved my PC off the desk and it's completely trashed. I tried to fix it, but no luck. 
She even said she was upset that it seemed like it might still work. Can you believe that? But let me back up a bit. After that whole mess with her demanding I quit my job or demand Saturdays off, I thought we had reached a breaking point. I mean, we both just started new jobs, and we're trying to sort out childcare, which is a nightmare. She's working these 12 hour shifts, and I'm trying to make ends meet with my new sales job. It's like we're both on edge, and every little thing sets us off. Now, I've been thinking a lot about our past, trying to figure out where things went wrong. We rushed into this whole marriage and family thing, you know? We were just kids ourselves, barely out of our teens. I remember how her parents were always on her case, pushing her to be more ambitious. But she never really had that drive. And me, I wanted to climb to the top, be someone. But life had other plans, and here we are, struggling to keep it together. Anyway, back to the drama. So after the PC incident, things cooled down for a bit. We were both exhausted, just trying to get through the day. But then, out of nowhere, she tells me she's been talking to her old friend from high school. This guy, let's call him Mr. Helpful, has been giving her advice about our situation. And guess what? He's been feeding her ideas about how she deserves better and should take our daughter and leave. I couldn't believe it. It's like he's trying to sabotage our already shaky marriage. And the worst part? She's listening to him. She's starting to believe that maybe she should leave, take our daughter, and start over. It's like all our problems are suddenly my fault, and she's the victim here. But here's the kicker. Yesterday I came home from work, and she's packed up half the house. She's got bags and boxes everywhere, and she's telling me she's leaving to stay with her mom for a while. She says she needs space to think, to figure out if this is what she really wants. I was stunned. I mean, I knew things were bad, but I never thought she'd actually leave, and with our daughter, no less. I tried to talk to her, reason with her, but she was determined. She said she needed to do this for herself, to see if she could be happy without me. So she left, just like that. Took our daughter and went to her mom's place. And now I'm here, in this empty house, trying to wrap my head around everything. It's like my whole world has been turned upside down. I keep thinking about our daughter, how this is going to affect her. She's just a kid, caught in the middle of all this mess. And I'm worried about what's going to happen next. Is my wife going to come back? Are we going to get a divorce? How am I going to see my daughter? It's a lot to take in. And I'm not sure what to do next. I guess I'll just have to wait and see what happens. But one thing's for sure, I'm not giving up on my daughter. No matter what, I'm going to fight for her. Make sure she knows I'm here for her. And as for my wife, I don't know. Maybe this space will be good for us. Maybe it'll give us both some perspective on what we really want. Or maybe it's the beginning of the end. Only time will tell. But for now, I'm just trying to keep it together. Take it one day at a time. It's all I can do. Thanks for reading. My wife and I said no to gifting our tortoise to my nephew because of bad living conditions. But when my parents called her nasty and lied about the tortoise being lost, I made sure their apology was heard loud and clear at the family reunion. Wife accidentally saw a text exchange between my mom and dad calling her nasty. This is going to be a weird one, where a problem seemingly small balloons and unearths something bigger. It started all because of an innocent tortoise. For more context, my mother-in-law has been buying up tortoises that people sell on the side of the road in tiny cages here in South Africa. She leaves them by our, mine and my wife's house. Since we have a large garden, they can be free to roam in until she can rehome them for free, mostly to friends and family. She does not resell them. We currently have five tortoises wandering around chomping on clovers and having the time of their life two babies and three slightly bigger ones, small football-sized. On to the actual story, my nephew had his own pet tortoise that, according to my older brother, ended up in their pool one night a few months ago. They've been lying to their son, five, or distracting him whenever he asks about it, until they can save up to replace it. About R2000. My wife had an idea to potentially gift my nephew the tortoise for an upcoming religious holiday. However, when she brought it up with my sister-in-law, she had conditions that it should not be a gift 
but rather that her son seemingly finds his tortoise all well and good. Initially, my wife was disappointed because she likes to give gifts, but she understood on the condition that my brother builds a better enclosure. The previous tortoise of a similar football size lived in the box, about a meter squared, which we thought was wrong for a pet. My sister-in-law said her box is fine, which again made my wife a little uneasy. The box had no foliage at all, only another box for shelter. My wife had told her mom about possibly gifting it to my nephew before she spoke to my sister-in-law, but after hearing her intentions, we all three decided it was not in the tortoise's best interest to go from having freedom in a garden to a box. It's completely inhumane, in my opinion. My brother does not have a garden since he lives in a complex. So we told my sister-in-law that, unfortunately, my mother-in-law had already found homes for them and that we're sorry. We thought that was the end of that, since my sister-in-law seemed fine with that, and they would continue looking to purchase another tortoise. However, later that day, we were at my parents' house with our kids, and I was talking to my dad about something while my wife was printing documents behind him. She turned around to see he was not particularly interested in what I had to say since he was texting and giving me one-word answers. My wife then took a picture and sent it to me to show me that my dad was kind of ignoring me. So my dad's eyesight is horrible, and in the picture, you can clearly see he was texting my mother, in which she said my wife was nasty for not giving my brother the tortoise. We promptly left. I told my dad later that we saw the text and were not happy about my mom saying that about my wife without hearing our side at all. It really hurt my wife's feelings, and she cried all day. My parents gave a half-arsed apology, not actually acknowledging the hurtful message, and then proceeded to double down and saying, we were wrong for taking a picture of a private conversation. We've gotten no contact for about a week to gather our thoughts. In our culture, the firstborn, my brother, is always treated like gold no matter what, and I've always felt a little overshadowed. My parents taking their side over not even hearing ours kind of cements that feeling. My parents are more focused on my wife disrespecting them in their home by taking the picture instead of the context of the picture and have been blowing up my phone, doubling down that they've apologized, but my wife is wrong too. I'm on my wife's side in all this. I just don't understand why they're doubling down instead of working through a hurtful message they sent. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. I just don't understand why they're doubling down instead of working through a hurtful message they sent. You said yourself, they will always love your brother more than you. And as a result, they will always favor his wife more than yours. The best you can do is just exit this toxic relationship and reduce or go no contact. Nothing good will ever come out of this relationship. Comment two. I've gone very low contact with my in-laws and it's glorious. My father-in-law is horrible. I love my mother-in-law, but she enables his bad behavior. I love that my father-in-law ignores me when we do see him. I don't have to listen to him anymore. I will offer this advice to your wife. Stay out of it. Don't engage, don't notice, don't look their way at all. Now for the update. Thanks for all the comments on the last update. Things have escalated since then. The tension between my wife and my parents was like a ticking time bomb. And it finally went off at the worst possible time. My brother's son's birthday was coming up and my parents decided to throw a big family gathering. They invited everyone including us, despite the recent fallout. My wife and I were hesitant, but we didn't want to be the ones to ruin a kid's birthday, so we agreed to go. The day before the party, my mom called me, her voice trembling with a mix of anger and desperation. She said that my brother had lost his job and that they couldn't afford the birthday party they had planned. She asked if we could help out financially. It was a tough spot to be in, but my wife and I talked it over and decided to chip in. We didn't want my nephew to suffer because of adult issues. At the party, things were awkward, to say the least. My parents were polite but distant, and my brother and sister-in-law barely acknowledged us. But the real kicker came when my nephew opened his presents. My brother had somehow managed to buy him a new tortoise, and they presented it as the one he had lost. My wife and I exchanged a look, knowing the truth but keeping silent for the sake of peace. After the party, my wife and I were driving home 
when she broke down in tears. She felt betrayed and sidelined, and I couldn't blame her. It was clear that my family was willing to overlook our feelings to maintain appearances. We decided then and there that we needed to have a serious talk with my parents about boundaries and respect. A few days later, we sat down with my parents. It was a difficult conversation, filled with accusations and hurt feelings on both sides. My mom accused my wife of being too sensitive and not understanding the family dynamics. My dad was more conciliatory, but still stood by my mom. My wife, for her part, expressed her pain and the feeling of being an outsider in the family. The breakthrough came unexpectedly. My dad, who had been mostly quiet, suddenly spoke up. He admitted that they had been unfair to my wife and that their behavior was rooted in old traditions that didn't justify their actions. He shared a story about his own father, who had always favored his eldest son, causing a rift in their family that never healed. My dad said he didn't want to repeat that mistake. It was a moment of raw honesty that changed the atmosphere. My mom, seeing my dad's vulnerability, softened and apologized to my wife. She admitted that she had been wrong to call her nasty and that she had let her emotions get the better of her. From that point on, things slowly started to improve. My parents made an effort to be more inclusive and considerate of my wife's feelings. They even started to see the tortoises as more than just pets, but as living beings that deserved proper care. My wife, feeling validated and heard, began to heal from the hurt. The risk of confronting my parents could have torn our family apart, but instead, it brought us closer together. It wasn't easy and took a lot of uncomfortable conversations, but in the end, it was worth it. My wife and I learned that standing up for what's right, even against family, is important. And my parents learned that their actions have consequences and that it's never too late to change. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.